just cannot get rid of me. I keep coming back. It's like a bad penny. <coughs> anyway, I'm going to play with something that is kind of a combination of things because Angelica Nyquist or Nyquist or however she pronounces it. Sorry, Angelica was talking about having a palette like this. There's no white, there's no black. And what she wanted to do was find what she was calling a companion palette that had a white and a black and maybe a couple other things. And this is much larger than the palette she was thinking of. She was thinking like, you know, four or five pans. But this is the one I have. This is the C Color Angel. So it's got a nice clear white, nice clear black, and a few other things. So I'm going to try and do a look and see how this goes. Now this is the third attempt. Okay? Day before yesterday, I did an absolutely lovely look. I did. It was Budimus. But when I went to go do the edit and all that stuff, it came up and told me that the file was corrupt. I about died. The only thing that wasn't corrupted was the second segment that I filmed that was only about nine minutes of the wrap-up. And I'm going, just shoot me now. Came out beautiful. It was really nice. And then I was not happy. I'm especially not happy because the really, really nifty sweater I was wearing got besmirched at dinner. So... It was pre-spotted and taken to the wash, and it's not back yet. So, yeah, I ordered a bunch of sweaters from ThreadUp. Any of you who haven't heard of ThreadUp, it's an online thrift service. And you can go online and you can look at stuff in the clearance section, which is really inexpensive, or the regular sections, and they sometimes have name brand stuff, and some of the stuff is just whatever. But there's a lot more selection than you'll, than you'll get at your local thrift store. They don't really have a lot of men's clothes. They have a lot of kids' clothes. They have a lot of women's clothes. They have a lot of shoes. They have bags and accessories and all that. But I got five sweaters, really nice sweaters, for less than 40 bucks, shipping included because they were all in clearance. Now, I decided to go on this little journey of getting sweaters because when we yanked the sweater container out of the bottom of the closet to bring it out for the season, we discovered we'd had some visitors. You know, that 
those little drops that some people call black rice and that absolutely gorgeous pink sweater that I have worn on here just about every winter since I started doing this gorgeous pale pink sweater nice scalloped collar little pearl designs all over the place it had been moused like right here moused seriously and I'm going it's like we had to go through all the rest of the sweaters we had and decide whether they were staying or going we didn't lose everything but I didn't have that many sweaters myself to begin with so it was time to put together some more sweaters so I would stop stealing my husband's <laughs> so yeah I hit the big time and went to thread up I love thread up I really do they're wonderful anyway I'm going to see if I can resurrect the look or some semblance of the look and we will go from there cross your fingers this could get strange I don't know why I'm warning people that you already know I'm strange <clears throat> yes I've got two-tone hair currently it's raspberry twist in the front but I didn't bleach anything so this is over the current brown and gray and then in the back back here I used one that's called titanium which is supposed to be a silver and it's like I didn't get a metallic silver though so anyway that's what we're doing up here yes I have a fresh haircut and all that stuff so let's see if I can manage to put at least some of this back where it was now I've already got this I know this is unusual for me I get it but I've already got sunscreen and primer and foundation on and some blush and a little highlight and and some bronzer and got my eyebrows on yeah I was chatting with somebody and just kept putting stuff on while I was chatting instead of paying attention and remembering I was going to do film I don't know why I keep calling it film I have never been able to get straight into just calling it a video I think it has to do with my age and the fact that okay yeah it's a digital medium but I have a camera in front of me that is recording images and sound to a medium it just isn't celluloid anymore <sighs> what a drag it is getting old <laughs> anyway as of September 1st I have graduated my degree has been conferred and hopefully once I get a I look together that I really like I'm going to get the robes out of the box steam them to get all the wrinklies out because it's probably folded up into a little you know square oobledy dee doop um, and I've got the the diploma the fancy diploma that's straight from the 
from college is in the fancy diploma frame that I picked up that's got the school logo and all that horse manure on it. And I'm going to do some pictures with the cap and the gown and the diploma, da 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 da, because part of what they're looking for for the virtual commencement is pictures of the um, graduates doing stuff like turning their tassel and showing off with the diploma and all that stuff because they don't they want a relatively interesting portrait done for putting in the in the program but they want some other pictures so that they can like you know bulk up stuff a little bit once I'm certain of the time and all that for the virtual commencement I will put that up in a couple of put it up on on my Facebook and Instagram and YouTube and because it's on YouTube it's free to see if anybody wants to see crazy woman being being announced for getting her degree there you go anyhow let me see if I can do this again now what I did is I've got the Ace Butte Nostalgia Palette and I've got the Angel Palette so I'm going to put some stuff on and then I'm going to use things like the white to blend the edges on some of the stuff and the black to darken up the corner and take a little bit under here from the corner and I hope it comes out good like I said the one that I did the other day came out really nice and I was really PO'd when I found out it had corrupted I was not happy Let's see, I've already got my eye primer on. Yes, I've got a bunch of e.l.f. stuff all over my mug. Now, I started with the green in the Nostalgia palette that's called Theme Park. Because the sweater I was wearing was about this shade of green. I like this shade of green. Unfortunately, it's in the laundry currently. So, I don't have it to play with again. And I basically just kind of loaded in to this area with the green and what are the, a couple of the other things I started talking about was some of the interesting makeup I have done for Halloween where you can take makeup and make costume masks for people with just makeup. So if you've got somebody that's got issues with being closed in behind the plastic mask or has trouble with um, sensory issues because they just they they have they can't see well with the plastic mask on 
and they just don't want anything over their face like that, you can do some perfectly interesting and fun versions of masks with just a little makeup. You don't have to necessarily put a mask on somebody that's, you know, okay, it looks kind of like the, the character from, you know, comic book or a movie or something. But if the mask is not comfortable and the person wearing it does not appreciate the sensations they're getting, then, you know, take it off them, do a little paint work with your, with your makeup, and they can be happy that way. You know, it doesn't take but a couple of minutes to take some eyeliner and some black shadow to make a pirate patch for the eye. Yes, you can just draw it on. If they want to look like a pirate that minute, they just close that eye and squonk at them with the other one. You can paint nose leather in whatever color you want right here on the end of their nose. Stick a couple of whiskers on either side and go to the dollar store and get a headband with ears on it and let them be who they want to be. They can be a doggie, they can be a kitty, they can be a bunny. <sighs> Heck, most of the dollar stores even have headbands with unicorn horns on it this time of year. You don't have to get crazy. I sometimes just put decorative stuff on. Like, I've got, got a lump in my forehead right here. Lump. That's where my sister clanked me with a rock. And it chipped the bone a little bit. And then when the bone filled in, I have this nice little round place. But that nice little round place works really well for kind of dusting around it with black and then putting white on the lump so it stands out a little bit. So then I've got a 3D effect moon. And then I take the, the eyeliner and I paint little pictures like bats or kitty cats sitting in the moonlight. I've been known to put bats so that they look like they're flying out of my eye. On the other side, it put, you know, cobwebs and stuff and spiders dropping down. And one year I took some red, just plain red makeup and dusted it all through my hair, all the way down to the scalp and up through this way and down this way and I got dark down here in the center and made it look like somebody had just chopped into my head and I didn't need an appliance so you know I didn't have a plastic axe hanging out my head but then you know just color the face to look like you're not well <laughs> It's like I added some green and I put some bruising on the face and really worked it. And it looked good. It looked scary. And one year walking around town taking the grandkids to the local shopping area because we've got all these little boutique shops running down Main Street on both sides and they were doing their tr doing a trick-or-treat for the kids and I had watched 
that Nikki Tutorials The Power of, Ma of Makeup video that she did where literally you take half of your face leave it blank you know a little moisturizer that's it and the other half is all made up but it's defined by a line around it so that it looks like a mask so I did that and then I worked around the edges and made it kind of stand out a little bit by doing shadowing and stuff so that it definitely looked like I had adhered a mask to my face. I got so many compliments from people as I walked around the street with the grandkids. And I had several people come running up and, how did you do that? Is that really a mask? No, it's makeup. And they were just as happy as if they had good sense when I told them about how to do it. So, yeah. Now, I'm going to take one of my favorite things. Raspberry. Raspberry. Yes, I've got this lovely green. Now I've got purple. Raspberry. And I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. I'm also trying to figure out how I'm going to do the look for the graduation pictures because I want to I want to do me but I don't want me to be so over the top that nobody can see me all they see is the makeup so it's like I'm having to learn to balance who said I wanted to? Anyway, I'm going to figure it out. Now, this is what I did the other day. I started with the green and then kind of drug some of the raspberry through the crease a little. so much fun doing this. This looks so good. And when I went to go see my brain care specialist, she thought it was just spiffy. And she had a student nurse practitioner with her. And me being me, I said, sure, fine, she can stay. I'm good with it. And found out she's another one of my tribe. The student is into science fiction and fantasy and going to conventions and all that stuff. So I have another member of the tribe. You know that thing where you, you go someplace and everybody and you are like talking about stuff and you're seeing eye to eye on things and you're enjoying yourself and they're enjoying themselves and there are some philosophers of the new age who will tell you that that is your tribe you have found them Bring that green back up just a little. Now, see, this is about where I got the other day when I started bringing the other palette in. Yes, I'm cleaning my brush off over here. And I picked up the angel 
again let me show you the angel it's got a black nice matte black and a matte white and a few other things so I opened it up and after I cleaned off that brush I picked up some of the matte white and a cat hair <laughs> and I just kind of tapped it along the edge of the green a little to kind of blend the edge out just a tad <laughs> yes I got a little white fallout on the rest of the eye eyelid so I went and it worked it got it off but see you get more layers of color when you have something like the matte white and the black to play with because you can layer the colors easier having those two to help you do gradients and deepen up or lighten up some stuff now one of the things that I did is because I'm working with green and I had the green sweater this shirt has some little greeny blips in it but they're not very easily seen but I'm going to do exactly what I did because the angel has this green here which is a little shimmery and I'm going to pick that up and put that on the lid and yes I'm going to spray and then there's a pale gold in the far end of the palette and I'm going to put some of that pale gold in the very inner corner and this was one of the things where Angelica was talking about if you've got something like you know a pale color that goes with the rest of the stuff or is a nice addition then you can change up your look really quick to be something other than what you could get without having just the main palette to deal with because there's no other green in that palette there's several shades of purple there's shades of yellow there's shades of orange there's a little red there's some mustard but there's only the one green so the angel palette has a shimmer green as opposed to the matte green that I've got pulled out of nostalgia so I can layer in a variant to kind of enhance the other green a little bit
without much trouble. Alright, where'd that one other one go? Fine. Yeah. I gotta get my little fluffy brush again. Because right in here, where the green and the raspberry meet, it's a little rough. So if I tap this on here a little bit, that'll kind of blend the edges a little better. So that it doesn't look quite so much like I'm trying to sneak something in. Now, one of the things I like about both of these palettes, there ain't a lot of fallout going on here. Get that fluffy brush again and do a tappy tappy. to soften up that blend edge. So far, so good. What do you think? Now I'm going to get one of my little pencil brushes. But I want a little one there. Little, little, little. go in the black and literally just barely tap it little and just tap it right here in this corner just to deepen that up a teeny tiny little bit Okay, see the difference? A little darker, a little lighter. So now I'm going to do the same thing over here. And darken that up just the tiniest bit in the corner. I'm not dragging it everywhere. I don't want a specific shape. I just want a little bit of a dark blob in the corner for the heck of it. And then I'm going to take what's left on this little pencil brush and start lining the lower lash line just for the heck of it. Just to kind of connect the top and the bottom a little. I don't want to go too far over with that one. And then, go back to my little flat brush here. I'm going to pick up a little bit of that green from the Angel palette and get under here. Clean off that brush just a little bit and then start picking up that pale gold. Now, the Nostalgia palette has got a deep mustardy gold in a shimmer, but I don't want 
something that dark right down in the corner. I like that gold. I like it a lot. Do the spritz. Alrighty. Now, what do you think? Does what this Angelica talk, was talking about with a quote unquote companion pill, I mean, even though this one's bigger than what she was talking about. The two palettes together is a lot of different looks, but it's not that much to pack. You don't need two massive palettes if you've got one smaller one that's got stuff you need. Okay, I'm going to take my wobbly, shaky hands offline, and I'm going to pray that this thing did not come up corrupted, and I'm going to put the mascara on and put the eyeliner on, that stuff, and then I'll be back, and we can talk about lippies. lippy and I know that there's a bunch of people who preach you shouldn't wear a bold lip with a bold eye and I'm sitting here going have they ever met me you know have they ever met me so yeah there's gonna be a bold lip with the bold eye and everybody else can get over it yes they can i said so Yes, I'm taking to using more lip liner because the more crinkly my lips get, the more they bleed. So, put a nice coat of lip liner on. And hopefully thereby keep the color from running all over my face. Now, I told you about the stuff that I've done a little bit back to do safe mask and makeup appearances. 
and I told you about that because I'm going to do it again. Some of them will be repeats of the ones that I've done in the past, but that's fine. Some people will not go look up the stuff in the past <laughs> to see what I did. Now, I bought some stuff from Leanne Soreo's Poshmark. She got some pretty stuff on there. Really pretty. And when I got my box in, she had snuck in a few other things. Now, I can't guarantee she would do that all the time. But she snuck in some other things, including this wonderful I Heart Revolution liquid lipstick in the color Cranberry. Does it match the eye look? <laughs> no. But I like it. the bright reds that's not necessarily her jam so I'm happy to take it there we are finished finished since I'm trying to get back into doing this a little more regular if anybody wants to collab drop me a line if anybody wants me to talk more about the way I do stuff drop me a line and yes this is a 64 year old as of last month 64 year old face with hooded creepy eyes that is doing this stuff anyway it I'm doing it anyway because nobody is allowed to tell me what I can do with makeup or my clothes or much of anything else. You can tell me, but you can't tell me much. I have been telling the fashion police to step off with their beige for years. They started telling me beige was what I should be wearing now. And let me tell you, there ain't gonna be any pastel or beigey gold velour jogging suits in my future anytime soon. If you see me in one, shoot me please because I have gone round the bend. I will wear colorful makeup from now until they close the lid. I love it. I like it. It's fun to play with. Do I occasionally wear something quieter? Yes. Because I don't always have to be in the brightest thing in the room. I mean, think about it. If I was going to a friend's laying out, I'm not going looking like, you know, clown life rest of the time it's all on me it's not that deep it's makeup you can wash it off if you try something and decide it's not for you it washes off go play go play go play with makeup go play with clothes 
Go play dress up with your grandkids. Don't let anybody tell you that you cannot have fun. Because if they don't think you should have fun, that's their problem. Behave yourself. No, really, behave yourself. I do not have bail money. I still don't have a working car. I most assuredly do not have bail money. Go play. It'll keep you active. It'll keep your mind active. 